So we're gonna set up the wire light here. What we have in this here bag, a whole bunch of wire, that would be the wire part of the wire. We've got the machine that uh, attaches to the wire. We'll take a look at how that works, but it basically hangs like this. And there's a remote control, some brakes in there, whatever, let's just set it up. This is the crank to hold all the wires together. You release it like so, just pop that off, and then this can now pull out freely. Wrap this around your first anchor point. And just clip the carabiner over the wire, like so, to the other end. Once you get near the other end, you don't actually wrap it around the, the other anchor. So we just lock it off here. That's locked. Now we gotta get the anchor strap to tie around this tree. This tells you number one, first step there is to attach this anchor, wrap it around and attach it to this strap. And then step two is on here. Step two is to attach this to the wire and then cinch it off with this here. I wanna hug this tree. Tree hugger. Got it, let's try. And then this attaches onto here. So now that's what holds the wire together. And then this is your tension. According to the user manual, when you're setting this up, you want to apply 40 kilos or 390 newtons, I think, NMs. You obviously know your strength in newtons. Seems good. It seems to me that there should be some kind of secondary latch on here, which there isn't. I mean, all it's going to do is lose tension. It's not like it's going to fall, but it still feels like there should be something here to lock this in a little bit stronger. Now, take our friend the Wyrel, open this guy up, turn that on. There's a little safety pin here. That is what you clip over the rope. That just goes in, so that's your safety. It can't fall off. And then the wheels just go on top like so. There are these brakes that you snap onto the wire to help it slow down in the event that you forget to slow it down. These brakes just attach on and they slide, but with quite a bit of tension. So if the device hits it, it actually has some room to slow it down before it smashes into the tree. And by design, it may just knock it off. But even if it does, you've got this pin here holding it. So there's no fear of it hitting the ground. And then this is the remote control. So we'll turn the remote on. It'll take a moment to connect. There's no setup. It just finds it and connects. And I think it's now connected. Yep, there we go. And now we have movement. This can easily hold the weight of a GH5, but we're going to uh, not push things on our first real run here. We're just going to put it on the GoPro for now. Now, which way are you shooting? Are you going to shoot? I'm going to shoot this way. What I've like... seen people do is shoot straight towards, you know, down the line, and then you see the line. Right, and then you see the line. Yeah, if you're shooting down the line, you're going to see the line which doesn't seem like a clever idea. So the other thing that you can do is set a digital brake. So now we've set the stopping point on that end. Now, let's see. So one of the big advantages I think of something like this is that if you're, if you want to shoot a smooth shot like we just did, the walking shot, you can use the, either use a gimbal or a drone. And in an environment like this, you couldn't fly a drone. There's too many sticks and trees and branches and the gimbal would work possibly except that the ground is really, really uneven. You'd have to have someone very, very skilled to be able to move across it or have one of the big, not just a gimbal, but a full on uh, steady cam rig. But I think just with a gimbal, it'd be pretty hard because this is pretty uneven terrain here. So in a case like this, I think it works out really well. There's some other shots that I want to get. When I get there, I know the answer. Let me know, let me know when I get closer. And first time he tries it, he gets it. All right. <laughs> yeah, see, this doesn't. Here, come here, give me a close up of this. So when I pull this tight, it, see, it just pops back. I do wish that this was a little bit stronger. 
but it is what it is. It's important to have a clear path for the wire, for the camera. This is my tree. And it needs to be cleaned up a little bit anyway. <laughs> Do the SpongeBob three hours later. Next time, go grab a big saw. Put that in the burn pile. Oh yeah. Clear all the way up. Beautiful. Sweet. Let's go to high speed mode. And oh bring god. It back. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it out of high speed mode before I break my camera. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Let's see what that looks like. Now we're gonna get a little bit gutsy. We're gonna put a real camera on here, putting the GH5S on. I actually don't know, I'd have to run some tests to see if the stabilized sensor and lens would be good or bad for this. That's an interesting question. Because we definitely get some movement. I don't know if we want it stabilized or not. Well, this is the S, so no stabilization, and this is the 15 Leica lens, so no stabilization either. So this is purely unstabilized. I don't see what we get. Somebody's gonna comment, dude, your camera's upside down. The camera's upside down? Oh no! What's nice too, it's worth pointing out, is we are at quite an angle here. We're quite a slope. And now it's got this GH5 on there and it, it moves just fine. It moves uphill, no problem at all. Straight towards the warm sun and into his head. Now we're running with dual IS. See if it makes a difference. <laughs> 